Today I'd like to share with you the process and steps I take while creating art prints. I'm going to start out with scanning the prints, how I get them ready to be scanned, how I scan them in, and then how I bring them into Photoshop and edit and kind of clean up the prints so that I can actually print them out on a printer. And then we'll go through printing them and which printer I use to make my prints, and also how I assign my prints and what I label onto the back of them, and also how I package them. I will be talking about certain products during this video, and all of those products will be listed in the description below in case you'd like to purchase them as well. Alright, so let's get started! So I am using my Epson Perfection B39 scanner. This is about $100 on Amazon. It's a flatbed scanner and it's easy to scan small drawings or paintings and also very large ones. The software is also really easy to use and definitely user friendly. I also like that it's powered directly from my USB port to my laptop. The only painful activity here is that I normally have to hold down the scanner so that my watercolor paintings are flat and you'll see later on what happens when your art isn't flat. Anyways, for settings, I generally use it on the standard settings Epson gives. The main key here is the resolution. If you want to be able to make your art larger, you need the resolution to be higher. I'm only going to do about 800 for this one because it takes a long time to scan in, and it's also just an example. Next up, you can choose your save point and then hit go. So this is the part where I'm pressing down on top of the scanner. Sometimes I'll even lay like a heavy book on top, um, just for the sake of my hands not having to hold down the scanner. So I'm gonna speed up this video some just so that we don't have to wait too long, but be wary, it can take a while to scan in large scale artwork for sure. Next up, Epson saves our scan to the folder that we selected and brings up the folder once it's done. I'm going to be editing my art in Photoshop because there's more control and I'm familiar with it, but you can also use other editing software to do very similar things. Once the scan is up, I rotate it if I need to, and honestly normally I forget my scanner orientation so I pretty much always have to rotate it. Then the next step is cropping. Sometimes I'll leave a white border, especially if I'm showing the client the painting because the actual painting itself has a white border, and then this way they can kind of see the painting for what it actually is. So I recommend if you're doing this method, just use the crop tool and size it at whatever size the original artwork is. So this one is an 8x10 and I want to do the same as the actual painting. That being said, if I'm going to make this painting an actual print, I'll crop the painting to the edge so that I can have a nice clean border. Next up, I like to make a duplicate of the space layer so that if I mess up, I can get the original one back. And from here, I like to start off by using levels and play around with the contrast, the lights and the darks until I'm happy. The scanner can scan generally well sometimes, but I like to make sure the image on my screen matches the artwork perfectly. So normally I have the artwork right next to my computer and I kind of play with this tool until I feel good about it. So you can kind of see like the contrast that I just did with the levels. It is already looking a lot better because it is a true black in person. Next up, I use the clone stamp tool to go around and clean up the painting. I like to keep the stamp tool small and in between hard and soft borders. Normally at this step, you know, what I'm cleaning up are typically like eraser shavings or things that were on my scanner that were not on the actual painting, but basically spots where I'm not happy with it if I were to print it off. So essentially I go slowly around the entire painting, mainly the background first, to make sure there aren't any imperfections. I've printed an eraser shaving before and honestly it's a huge bummer to notice, especially when you're packaging it up and you're like, oh, 
there's a mistake. And you definitely don't want to give like a mistake to a customer because they may notice and at least you know that you did your best to clean it up. So now is a good part to point out what happens when your artwork isn't flat to the scanner. You can see here that it's blurry, and normally I would go back in and rescan this area to fix it, but since this is an example, I'm gonna keep moving forward. Um, but yeah, if you see any like blurry spots, you definitely need to fix those because it will show up in your final. And I'm just gonna go quickly around the face of the cat just to make sure that there aren't any mistakes. Next up, I like to go in with the burn and dodge tools to bring out the lights and darks. I don't want to fake the painting, and I don't want it to not look like the actual painting, but again, scans aren't perfect most of the time, so touching them up is a good thing. I basically like to go over it a couple of times, and then compare it to the original scan and the painting, which again is normally right next to my computer, and if I like it, I go in and save. I recommend doing PNG because there is no downsizing, but it does take up more space on your computer and takes more time to save. So this one was just a small painting, but what if you have a larger one that won't fit on the scanner bed? If you have Photoshop, I recommend using Photo Merge. You'll have to scan in the art pieces in sections and then select all of them for Photo Merge to work. This was an 18 by 24 inch drawing I made. After you select all of the image from the drawing or painting or artwork, you essentially hit OK, and Photoshop does all of the work for you. Once it's done, you'll see each scanned portion is a different layer. Once I make sure the merge looks good, I go ahead and merge all of those layers so that we can go back and edit. Basically from here, we go back to the original steps I just showed you. We do a crop, levels, clean up, etc. And I won't go through this again because you've already seen it the first time. But let's bring up the original file and I'll show you my print settings. So since the art is all ready to print, Based on our first few steps, we go to our print menu, and if you're using Photoshop, these next steps will apply. I'm not sure if they'll apply for other programs, but it does work for Photoshop. So I'm using the Canon PIXMA IP8700 printer. This is a large scale inkjet printer, and it can print up to 13 by 19. It has amazing quality, which I'll show in a minute, um, but for now, let's just go to the print setup. I generally use standard, and I typically leave grayscale printing and borderless printing unchecked. These can come in handy though, depending on what you're printing. I also recommend having preview before printing up so that you can see if there are any color issues before you actually print. Then you choose your paper. I use matte paper for art, so it looks similar to the art paper itself. Then I choose high quality, and we're essentially good to go. I am going to change my paper size real quick. So, next up and next steps for printing is color managing. I've tried to let Photoshop manage the colors before, and honestly I've had really poor luck. You know, it seems like a hit and miss, a lot of people recommend letting Photoshop manage, but I've always had much better luck letting the printer itself manage the color. Because each time, no matter what, the printer chooses the same color. So I think it's up to you which one you want to use for color managing. But yeah, that's my preference and I definitely recommend playing with it and testing it out. I also like to make sure center and 100% scale are checked and then I go ahead and hit print. So you can see my printer here. It's a backloading printer with the print side face up. It can take, honestly, quite a while to print, which you can see slightly from this video, but I'm speeding it up some so that we can get to the good part. So again, the quality I've seen from this printer is amazing. The colors are always super crisp and look just like the image on my computer screen, as well as the art in person. I also have been using Epson paper 
I'll link it down below in case you're interested, and it's nice and thick. Paper is definitely key for a good print job, so definitely invest money into your paper. And just to show you the difference in thickness, my watercolor paper is extremely sturdy and it's very hard to bend, but the light still shines through both in similar ways. So I think this is a good test to make for sure. Anyway, so that's all for my print steps. I have a packaging video separate from this one, so definitely check it out below if you'd like to know more about that process. And yeah, if you have any questions or need some help with making prints, definitely let me know. You're welcome to make a comment below or email me at my email address in the description. Thanks guys for watching! If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up below so that others can enjoy watching it too. If you're new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more content in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time!